surrogacy centres are providing their services to those who are on the sex offender registry, effectively allowing pedophiles to purchase children through them. Um, before I go on, I want to share with you a, a whistleblower release of a phone call in which two gay men uh, say they're trying to get a child or make a child or buy a child, however you wish to put this, uh, through this surrogacy process and they imply that one of them is on the sex offender registry and you can hear the response in which that's not a problem. So let's go ahead and listen to that before we go on. It's only like a minute and a half long. It's not long. Anyway, so I got a, I got a couple. Did they tell you I have a couple of questions for you? Yeah, yeah, I heard your voicemail. Oh, okay, cool. So excellent. Um, so I talked to Matt, or my husband, sorry. Um, and he's looking to go forward. We found a clinic locally. Uh, we were supposed to go and see a, um, see their clinic and meet with the team there Friday. Um, from my understanding, they do not do anything outside their own local, um, donor base for, uh, eggs. So that's probably something at, at the very least we're probably going to go outside for. Uh, one of the things you had mentioned is, um, oh, what was it? Establishing parents during a pregnancy. Could you, like, um, expand on that? Like, what exactly, or, or a pre-birth process, I think is what you said. Yeah, it's called a pre-birth order. So most states, a pre-birth order is done. There are a small handful of states that do post-birth orders. So okay. basically, um, your surrogates, like midway through the pregnancy, it, it varies a little bit by um, your attorney. Different attorneys like to do it at different times, but around midway through the pregnancy, um, you guys will essentially sue her for custody of the child she's carrying. So it sounds crazy and scary, but it's just how it goes. Um, one last one last thing I did ask you about last week. Um, sure. The um, if the uh, sex offenders list thing would ever be an issue, we actually did talk to our attorney. Uh, he said that's not an issue. It was, it was too long okay, ago. Okay. So as long as it's okay with us, it's okay. Is that so, it's okay with you? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Okay. So you heard that. It's it's not a problem for them, and that's one of the um, major surrogacy organizations. And you know, you end up in this. In a situation where a pedophile who could not ordinarily be around or live around a school, for example, can purchase his own child, which is so reprehensible um, that it's actually difficult to cover. I just find myself sort of at loss for words, and I imagine you probably do too. But all surrogacy is gravely immoral, even when well-intended. I've written about it. I'll link the article in the description and I'll pin it to the top comments if I remember. If I don't, feel free to mention it in a comment and I'll fix it. Um, I know how I am. But uh, surrogacy always violates the dignity and rights of children by making them into essentially slaves in a financial transaction in which they can be purchased. I mean, if you, if you think that slavery is wrong because a human being can't be bought and sold, then you can't really defend surrogacy, right? And it also deprives that child of his rightful parents and of being, of the right to be conceived within the, the act of two spouses offering themselves to one another in love within the constraints of a marriage. So it, it violates human dignity in so many different overlapping ways. And you end up with people who wouldn't normally be allowed close to children, as we see now, being able to make them, purchase them, as commodities. I mean, it's so unbelievably wrong that one doesn't quite know what to say. We've already come across cases of extreme child sexual abuse by gay couples that would not have been able to have children if those children were not given to them. You know, if they, in one way or another, didn't purchase them. And yes, I'm aware that pedophilia occurs within heterosexual homes too. This isn't about comparing worst case scenarios. It's about when we choose to put children in homes, we should do so in in a home where the ideal case is at least possible, where they have a mother and a father, let's say. But regardless of 
the sexual orientation, if you want to use that term, regardless of the attractions, um, couldn't we at the very least say that those adopting or purchasing children shouldn't be sex offenders? It's absolutely evil and abhorrent. But I really think that to some degree, this entire issue socially is clouded by the unwillingness by so many to say things about, say, homosexuals adopting children. Because, it, I mean, this used to be like a pretty mainstream conservative stance to say that homosexuals shouldn't, just regular adoption shouldn't adopt children. And now that's been watered down, uh, certainly quite a bit. And now you'll see the ingratiation of people like uh, Dave Rubin, right, who did the surrogacy thing with his um, faux husband and he's embraced by the by those who can call themselves conservatives even as he engages in this incredibly immoral egregious act i mean i, I interviewed denise McAllister about this and we talked about the day rubin case for an hour if you want to explore that but even in every surrogacy like children are are killed they they make multiple um, fully fertilized embryos, and then they kill the extras because they didn't want those and they weren't paid for. I mean, talk about the violation of human dignity is just extreme, and because they never get a burial or even so much as acknowledgement, nothing. They're just disposed of because they weren't part of the purchase agreement. To so talk about human lives in that way um, ought to be jarring to, to your conscience. It certainly is to mine. And the more that you read about uh, what goes on inside of surrogacy, the more just sort of horrendous it was. Or it is, sorry. But now, when you have this extra element, and this actually isn't new, uh, back ten years ago, The Guardian, a known leftist rag, uh, was writing about how <clears throat> pedophiles and sex offenders can use the process to purchase children that they shouldn't even have access to, never mind have inside their own home, be raising them. And yet it's something that isn't fixed. And I think that, again, this is largely due to the the uncomfortableness with which we approach any of these issues. And our priority ought to be, above all, protecting these children and their rights and not, not offending people, which seems to be like the, the, the modern uh, most important thing. And it's not, and it should never be. We can do better than that. If you enjoyed that video, please don't forget to like it. Also, I have other videos that you might enjoy. I have links in the description down below as to how you can support this work. So thank you so much.